All right. <clears throat> get to work. I'm going to be working pretty intensely for the next three hours till about three o'clock. And um, we're going to be doing a Jupyter Hub and Kubernetes stuff again. We, today we're going to be doing web development mostly um, because I've been customizing the template. Um, just the normal, the normal administrative stuff. Uh, this is all on GitHub. Uh, GitHub.com slash RWX Rob slash lab dash Kubernetes zero to Jupyter Hub here. Uh, all the stuff you see me writing in my log and everything is all being saved to that GitHub Learning Lab repo. You can go over there and do it. Learning Labs or you can go look at my definition for it if you want. But um, but what a Learning Lab to me is, um, is it's, well, I guess I probably need to write another one. I thought I had it. Oh, there it is. What is a Learning Lab? Chat. Is that chat? So actually, I did a video on that one, I'm pretty sure. You can go read about it there. So a learning a learning lab is just a, a GitHub repo, basically that that uh, captures the log of my learning what I was, was doing on it. Usually, it's related to some task I need to accomplish that I don't know enough about to do. Um, it's a big part of standard of infrastructure jobs or development job is to constantly be um, learning something new. You know, I didn't know any Kubernetes before this, so that's what that's about. Um, this is a co-working stream. I get, I was just reading through my comments on YouTube. Always a mistake, by the way. <laughs> and, and there's a number of people in the comments that are like, you talk too fast. I can't understand what you're saying. Uh, there's overly, what is it? What somebody say there's too much hype and it was all obviously to just get viewers. And I was like, you don't know me very well. <laughs> Like, it's a random streamer who doesn't know who I am and what I'm about, and it's like, okay, fine. They listen too slowly, but but the reason I'm telling you this is because the stuff I'm doing today is work. So from between now and three, this stream, my top priority is accomplishing tasks for my employer who's paying me money. The fact that I happen to be streaming it is just a bonus for you, and you should be fucking grateful because. It doesn't always happen that way. And there's a lot of other people who can't do that. And there's a lot of other tasks I won't be able to do that with because it's proprietary stuff that I'll be working on. So I, I'm not mad. I just, but I want people to understand that I have to operate at my pace. Now, if you, if you want an organized walkthrough, come back any other time, you know, and ask a question. You can even ask a question now. Maybe somebody will help you do that. And as I finish the boost badges, which is the next iteration of boost um, for 2022, that's my goal. Uh, you'll be able to work through those things at your own pace. And you can come on in and ask questions anytime uh, about the Boost content. You come here. Uh, eventually, we'll get some other things uh, figured out as well. All right. So I just had to put that out there because people, you know, they continue to, you know, want more out of me. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, question. Porsche asked the question, uh, will there be any controls around values entered into the forum? What if a user selects the max CPU? Yeah. We'll probably we'll put some controls in there. Uh, I, I thought I had to do in here. The place to put controls, by the way, is not in the web form, right? That that I think they need to be at least both places. If you, if we're going to put any, this is actually going to be pro. We're going to be pre presenting profiles at first, but then after that, we're gonna we're not going to do any form validation. Strict form val. It depends on how we present the template. We have to play around with different ideas there. Right now, it's just an input field. You just type it in, right? That, that's going to change, obviously. The most important thing we need to accomplish right now, first of all, and this is in the log, is we need to get, uh, I should probably make a new date for this log. So expand the uh, HTML form for profile, add image name validation from JavaScript to kubespawner. Um, we haven't done any of that yet. Add cores, GPU as resource parameters. We did that. Yeah, we need let's 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 actually make this more real. So yesterday, what did we do? Yesterday we uh, started a JavaScript uh, profile uh, field uh, consolidation. And and if you don't remember why that is, it's because we have to use the profile field because it's the only one allowed because of what I think is a bug in the software. So so that's up. That's what's up. Uh, we look at the query string to do our last one. We have we have our JavaScript is not working right now. Let's finish the JavaScript first. 
Um, <coughs> I, have, I have lots of lots of browser windows open on or uh, on JavaScript stuff because JavaScript I haven't done it in a while. I actually like JavaScript syntax. People people laugh when I say that. I'm not I'm not being funny. I actually do. If, if you're gonna do a scripting thing, you know why not? Yeah, I was actually so. We're not gonna actually have them type. So this is actually the that same concern has been raised already to me from my employer. So they're like, "Why are you gonna?" Uh, it is JavaScript can be uh, the fact that it's you know it's got fat arrow functions and all that stuff. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um. So, add image invalidation to form JavaScript and blah blah. blah. Okay, so there's okay. I had cores issue here. So let me just net this out. Okay, so the first step is to just get the stuff to pass, right? Just get the stuff to go in, and then we're gonna add we're gonna layer back in validation. So to make sure that our values are the same, that the values are good values, and we're gonna do that in two ways. We'll probably will write some sanity checks into the JavaScript, right here. Uh, against the form values, possibly. I mean, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, I, I think it's kind of overkill because y this is what I was trying to get to. If you're not validating your form data on the back end, you're doing it wrong, in my opinion. Because because anybody can mess with the form. So there needs to be some validation, and that's going to come in Python. There's going to be a Python code in the values file on the back end that's going to be doing that validation right here. Okay. So we're going to plop this form down in... Uh, and then this is this options from uh, this options from form thing right here. This options from form is going to be used. We're going to use we're going to validate the values having parsed them from the profile and decide what's up. Now, I don't know if returning false is going to be enough here. Um, we'll, we'll figure it out, but we need to find some way to trigger an error in the Python code that does the validation on the back end. That way, who cares how the, the content is submitted? This is cool too, because we could actually test this using curl commands and stuff like that, as opposed to you know, forcing us to do this in form. And we broke out the form into its own thing just so we could deal with the form and have to iterate through the Helm chart every time, you know, re redeployment. So this is what we're doing. Um, last we checked, we were just trying to combine all the values. And um, so, So we have an on-change on form event. Uh, we, we created this is actually some uh, technique I stole straight from the internet. Uh, they're just making encode your IM point as that's just, just making an alias, and so that's just escaping all the values, and it's cramming them all in and joining them with an ampersand. So this is basically URL um, query string escaping, and then it uh, it's, it's putting them all. It's also writing it out. So let's we should be able to go test that. Just from our web browser. Oh, the name cheap domains. That's right. With this is skills.dev. Yeah, I was doing that yesterday. All right. So, um, this is some of the same stuff we were talking about before. I think we actually have another one though. Yeah. All right. So, this is the one that's been dumping the values. Uh, I think my server process is still running. So, this anytime I change anything here, it should it should because you've got the unchanged events, these are the different field values, which don't, I mean, the form's got to, the form's got to be cleaned up. So, so the hidden profile value is zero equals whatever. Obviously, the, I'm doing it wrong. So we need to figure out what that is. Um, I think it's because of the keys uh, and the children. This is actually one of the problems with this kind of coding, I got to tell you, just in general, I've coded a lot of different styles and paradigms over the years, and one of the things I don't like about dotted notation with, you know, trailing on something else is you can't inject debuggable code into that. You following what I'm saying? I mean, you can, but it it's not like immediately obvious how to do it. So I personally have a problem with this because, I mean, you could try to put something in here, like I could put another map in here, right? Um, I wonder if I can do that and have it break it up. I don't think you can. I'm, I'm going to try something. I'm pretty sure this doesn't work, but I want to try it anyway. Map. Uh, but, you know, normally if you have a for loop, right, you just stick a print in there or something. 
It's a little bit harder to do if you're doing it this way with, with this you know functional kind of notation. It's not the reason I don't like Rust. I, look, I you can it has positive things to say about it, but that's one of the reasons I don't like it because it depends a lot really heavily on this this paradigm. And so does JavaScript, frankly. There's a lot of languages that like this dotted notation, send this over to this, to this, to this, and, and you know, pass it all on down through the chain. It's a very functional approach, but but I actually don't necessarily like that. Because if any error happens along the way, how are you going to trap it? You know, you have to add another, you have to, I, I just, I just don't like that, that design, that, that, that design. And I never really have, I, it took me a while to actually own the fact that I didn't like it, but whatever. Um, this is a uh, form children K, which is stupid because we don't have a map. We can't actually look up the form identifier. Um, this is, wait a second, this is not going to work because we need a number here. You know what I mean? So, so the form children zero to value. So equals object dot from, oh, you know what it does? It keeps adding it onto itself. Yeah. We're going to have to write this another way. I'm afraid. Yep. Yeah, we are. We're gonna have to write it a different way. So, so form children. Okay, so we're gonna go through all the form children, and see we can't we can't skip one. You see how it adds them all, right? We can't do a next iteration in this because we don't have a loop. It's this is actually one of the problems I think of the map filter reduce approach in general, and people can push it for generics and go so they can get that as it's one of the many things they want to get out of it, and I think that that's a problem. I I don't like it. Because you can't you can't skip the iteration. I can't put next here, right? I can just say return if the x and y, right? So that's probably what I'll end up doing. It says map. Uh, but see, this passes it off to the join, so it's going to join a value. This is this is a good example of when a for loop is way better than than this whole association thing. And I'm just going to own that. I don't like this way of doing it. I don't. I never. I don't think I ever have. Um, so we're gonna take this one off for for a bit. Uh, I'm just gonna do a four of. I'm gonna try the the four of. Four uh, key. Uh, is it of or in? This is a relatively new thing, and I think they added it because there's a lot of people who like form. Four above the other options. Console log. I just want to print the K for now. And let's reload this guy. Oops. Oopsie daisy. Back. Reload. All right. So the keys are actually numbers, obviously. Um, this is probably because they're not named. And um, it's going to be a problem. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it gives five five tier ones? Oh, my God. Thank you for that. Thank you, Nat. Nate. Nate is really helping out, man. He just gifted he just gifted seven total subs in the channel. I appreciate that. I mean, I wish, I wish subs get you something special. We need to get you some, like, emojis or something. That's really the only thing I'd be willing to give up for money. Because I don't want to hard my any of my content behind a paywall ever. I just don't ever want to do that. I just like it when people like you, you know, make up for the people who can't who can't pay for whatever. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you for that. Let's do this. So we've got um, this is just a traditional for loop. I, I really like this. this. Is actually akin to kind of the Python loops uh, that you might be familiar with. It does put a number as the key, and that's actually something I don't like about about JavaScript. I don't like that the associative arrays are named associative arrays. In other words, they have both they have both an index and a potential name. You can give them a name in addition to that. Uh, I do wish these form values were, you know, key value coded so that we could pick them by that. I could do that with get element by ID. Um, I think what I'll do instead is I'm gonna go ahead and grab whichever 
whichever one is name profile, I need to get that because if, if, if the names match, I need to skip it. And to do, I don't want to do it by numbers because if somebody changes the HTML, it would change the order of the numbers, et cetera. So, because the children would change, but the potential order of the children, somebody puts a div in there or something and the, all of a sudden the, you know, the children is dead. He can't go by the children. So we, we only want to go by the form uh, elements and we just want to, we just want to pick all of those. And I think uh, I could probably do that with a query selector, which will give me all of them. And that might actually be the better thing to do here. Um, because why? Because I'm, well, I do need to get a handle on the form because I got to be able to change a form value. Um, or do I, or do I? I think I can skip that. I think I can go straight to the form values. Yeah. I think I can go, let's keep escape here, but I, th I think I can go straight to the, instead of get element by ID, we could use query selector. And we could select the spawn form, which is the name. And then we could select um, all of the, the inputs, all of the input fields. And then we can, that should give us only input fields. And then we can look at the input fields will have IDs. So then we can item, itemize through those. Let's check that out and see, just for fun. So if we have any change, we want to do, we could say input, I mean, it, it's an input object, I guess. I mean, it's kind of a field. Let's say field, field of, of um, field, no, it's not key value pairs either, is it? Build a form dot children. I wonder if we were to do, val I guess we have to do values. Yep. Uh, form value inputs. I'm trying to change this up a little bit. So inputs. Uh, oh, so any change. Yeah, we still have to have the form. Yeah, we do. We're going to have to have the two. I, I want to be able to do the query selector against the form, which we can definitely do. But let's just stick with the form for now. And I'll just keep query selector on for now. So form, on change, inputs, field of object values. I, th I think we can do a query selector on the form, but I haven't done that. So... I think we can do this, actually. I think we can do, well, let's try it. I'm gonna put it up here and then we'll do it down later. So inputs equals form dot query selector in this, in that, and then we just do uh, input. That should only pick the inputs from the thing. On change, so as the form changes, then we could go through all the inputs and look at what the, they are. All right, so this is just vanilla JavaScript. I don't use frameworks, particularly for shit like this. How would I use a framework here? It's got to be embedded in Python inside of YAML, inside of a Helm chart. The other reason to learn generic vanilla JavaScript. Um, no, we're not getting anything. We're not getting. We're not getting any. We're not getting any on change at all. Form dot on change. I wonder why. Is spawn form not called ID anymore? Yes, it is. Hmm. Let me try something. Console log form. Okay. Yep, there we go. Form. Oh, form spawn form. That's why. Oh, it got it. It got it. Okay. All right. So query selector i don't maybe that's not a thing this is something new that i saw somebody doing and i just want to try it i haven't ever done it before they were actually calling query selector on a sub selection of the document which i don't know if you can do that console.log if inputs is empty is null then we know we can't do that we definitely know we can't input profile worked shit Oh, we need to do query selector all, of course. Whoopsie. That's been a while since I've done front end stuff. 
JavaScript is the framework. <laughs> uh, there we go. So there's our node list. So we got all of our we got all of our inputs, right? That's what I wanted. So now we can now we can iterate through those. And you can turns out you can do a query selector all on the isolated scope. So that's the first time I've used that before. I'm glad I figured that out. Um, what else? All right. So escape. We got that. So we're iterating over the values of inputs. I don't think we can do this. I think we actually have to have object values. I don't I don't think we can do inputs by itself. I'm gonna try this though. Watch it blow up. I'm gonna blow up on my face. Without frameworks, JavaScript would not exist. Yeah, no. I mean, it did it. Yep, it did it. I didn't have to do the objects thing. Great. Um, then we can say stuff like this. We can say, because it's a for loop, now I can skip it. So I can say, if a field, a field name, well, let's, let's, let's try something. I got to make sure that's a thing. Do, 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 do. Yep, that worked. Okay, so if field name, if uh, field name equals profile, then next or continue or break. What is it? I think it's continue. Yep, let's go test that. If this works, then every time I make a change, nothing should actually show. We just have image course RAM GPUs and GPU type. Image course RAM GPUs GPU type. That's what we want. So you don't want that in there. I like this. this is more Go like to write it like this. I know, and I haven't broken JavaScript idioms yet. It's still, still very JavaScript y. Um. All right. So, so what? So then we do this. We say now we can do our little, our little, you know like stuff to, to get it all on there. Um, so we get, you know, we get the, uh, we have the field name and we have the field value. So we have to join those together. Uh, we have escape. So we can say, um, I mean, I'm wondering if, uh, No, because we won't know that in advance. Yeah, I'm. I'm just thinking about something. We we don't know. We don't know which one's going to be profile. So I actually have to do this. I have to do uh, let profile equal inputs dot query selector. Uh, and it would be, it would be ID equals, right? It would be, uh, so that would be a profile. And I, I guess this is multiple query selectors, but it's isolated the scope. So it's not reading through everything, which is a little bit nicer. And here I could actually say if fill, fill then makes profit continue. But why am I doing that? Because now I need to build up the profile values field, right? So, so the profile by default should be empty. Uh, so actually no on, on, on change we need to zero out the profile first of all so we need to say profile dot value equals blank uh, and then we're going to add on to it and then we're going to we're going to add on a whole bunch so then we're going to say profile value we're going to add on the key equals value name. So right now we'll say fields name. I mean, the other thing too is we could build up an array and then just put a join on it. That might be the thing to do. Then we'll have like a training, a trailing comma or some shit. Yeah. I mean, it's a, that's a different thing to do, but 
Yeah, let's try that. So, actually, if I do that, then I can just set the profile value down here. I can just do profile value equals. Uh, actually, I wouldn't even. I could just do the input selector if I wanted to, but whatever. Profile value equals. Uh, uh, pairs dot join with an ampersand. All right, so so we're gonna make a pairs. So let pairs uh, equal uh, no. Let's let's do. Yeah, I mean pairs could just be an array. So so then what? Then we say we get a pen to the array, I guess. Yeah. And then we're going to join all the array, right? So it'd be an array of strings. So fill profile. Then we're going to say, so pairs. I think you can append to arrays this way. I don't know. We're going to find out. So then we do field dot name plus, uh, plus an equal sign plus field dot value. Probably a better way to do this. But this is my first tab. So reload. Unexpected identifier 23. Another reason not to use a framework. I can actually see right where it is. And yes, I know about maps. Mm. Oh, I forgot the plus. Uh, query selector is not a function. Interesting. Form query selector input. Well, I can do this. I can do form query selector profile. That's interesting. I learned something. I learned something today. Certain things you can't do that with. Other things you can. All right. So, all right. So that seems to be doing it. And then I'm going to console log uh, profile dot value uh oh it's not happening for some reason pairs oh wait console log I wonder if pairs is even getting, I don't know if I'm appending to pairs properly. I think I might have to use the append command. I don't know because this is, this is JavaScript. So I don't think my pairs, I don't think this is working. This is working to go or Perl or bash, but not here. So I'll have to mess with it. Yep. See, it's empty. See, it, it didn't add anything to it. So uh, I'm going to be very, open. I have no idea how to append it to an array in JavaScript. <laughs> I have been corrupted by all these other languages that do it a different way. So I have to go look at how JavaScript does it for a second. Pairs push. Is it just push? Uh, look at all my, my, my streams coming through for me. Thank you. It is just push, right? You feel good because you knew that. <laughs> So pairs push, which is if just very functional. God knows that's awesome. Uh, pairs push, pairs join. Uh, let's see what's up with that. Oh, still doing something wrong. Oh no, it worked. God damn. Wait a second. It keeps pushing to the same one because it didn't reset it. Cause I'm dumb. Uh, I have to, I have to reset it there, but I need the scope to be outside of that's actually a closure. Now, don't you love closures? I finally, you know, when I finally understood closures, some God, what was it? Several years back, but now I'm starting to like really use closures all the time. People use them. Don't even know they're doing it. Sometimes it's kind of interesting. Let's see. Reading join property rate. Yeah. 
was afraid of that. So we need to to reset. And by redefining it like this, I don't know if that's going to work because it's a different reference, but I'm going to try it. There's probably a command to clear the array. Prototype array. Shit. Nope, that's not it. Um, uh, the problem is, is it keeps pushing on every time, so we need to reinitialize it at the beginning. Is there like an init? Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, not pairs. What am I talking about? We need to clear out profile value. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need to clear profile. What was I thinking? This is totally fine. Okay, so profile. Profile that value. No, 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 Rob, 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 you're fucking your scope up. I am so dumb. I am dumb. I even told you I was dumb. That was like so stupid. Yeah, there we go. Scope problems. I have scope issues. Paris doesn't even have to be outside of scope, the event scope. So there we go. Uh, yup, that should be it. So, and this, we can put this inside of the there too, so I see it every time there's a change. Oh my God. You guys are like laughing. I know. Oh, I think that looks very beautiful. What do you think? Image equal image equals blank and cores equals DF. Yep. GPU type. That is what we want. So that task is done. Um... So that that loads up our profile the way we need it. Um, yep. Question out of the blue. Question: What do you think of the future of Hadoop? Apache Storm and Spark, MapReduce. I don't know enough about them to know anything about where they're going. Uh, full disclosure: We have a massive Hadoop cluster at work. I think it's cool. Uh, I think Hadoop is really cool from what I understand of it, but I I know I have almost no knowledge of that stuff. So I I don't want to have an opinion. I get slammed in the comment sections all the time for having, you know, black and white, strong, passionate, sometimes wrong opinions. And just, you know, make a note. I have no opinion on that because I don't have enough information. But when you do get enough information, hell yeah, I got an opinion. <laughs> and so should you. If you don't have an opinion, that means you haven't give, given it enough time to think about it. And if you have an opinion and you haven't done even minimal research on the topic, then you're worse. <laughs> so, I just put that out there. So, our code is done. Now, it's just time to clean up. Um, I'm going to actually save this as a commit point. Is the search engine query being put into the chat? That's sick. Yeah, it's minimal. It's a tiny little thing, actually. If you want, if you want to read about that, just use curl. I, I did a lot of stuff with Bash, and then eventually I'll port it over to some other real language. But yeah, um, is it just me? Or are you not using the escape function? I am not using the escape function. Good eye. Thank you for that. We should be escaping both the field name. I mean, if we're gonna make a real thing here. We went to all that problem to do it, so. Uh, thank you very much for telling me that. I almost committed this as golden. It's not. I should probably run some testing on it. It's hard to run testing on this kind of thing because it's a web thing, you know. Yep, thank you, I'm on a budget. I'm so glad you noticed that. I would have really bit me in the ass if you hadn't done it. So let's put some spaces in there and see what happens. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it put the space in there. It didn't escape it. Unless it did when it printed it. I bet it I bet it did when it printed it. I bet you it did when it printed it. You seeing this? We're gonna find out. So like if I 
No, man. It's I don't know if this is the actual value. Huh. Bashful Linux. DevOps. Yes. So yeah, DevOps DevOpsy kinds of things are definitely mandatory. They are I, I don't like CI C D, but whatever. The whole container let's just let's agree to disagree on that stuff. But, the, but containers, learn them, love them. <laughs> Developer, I don't care. Engineer, fine. Everybody's gotta know containers. I got that so wrong. I didn't think I needed them back in twenty fourteen as much as I did. And if I had picked them up in twenty fourteen, I would have it would have changed everything I did at skill stack. All of my learning sessions would have been containers. I probably would have ended up inventing Repolit before Repolit. But I, I said I don't need containers, and I didn't. This doesn't look like it's encoding to me. I don't know what to say about that. Um, I mean, it does not look like it. Is it, is it doing it, and it's just undoing it? Do you know what I mean? I think that's what's happening. You have a university project where you have REST endpoints. Nice. Yeah, Java, whatever to process, it doesn't matter. I think it's a, those are the kind of projects you should do to practice. And you should do them in multiple languages if you're trying to learn. The chances of you being asked to do a back-end project in any number of languages, including PHP and Node and Java, even though I hate them, doesn't matter, right? This whole entire job that I'm doing right now, this task I'm doing, requires me to have Python and JavaScript skills. So you can not like them doesn't mean you're not going to have to use them, right? So this is so important to not become a one-trick pony. You really need to have, you know, the ability to approach things from a polyglot approach, I think. So this is troubling me because I, I put, did I not reload it? Maybe that's it. I think that's the problem. Yeah, what? Now it's not responding at all. Oh, I took it out. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to hope that I didn't reset. Did they have a quoting mechanism like they do? In, actually, probably like a printf. I don't know. If I print the profile of the object out, that might be better. Because cause that'll that'll let me to drill, drill, drill in. Yeah, there we go. DF space. Okay, now I feel happier. Because before it was escaping it, the console log was escaping it, and now it's not. It's printing it in HTML form. You just got a call for an internship placement. A big startup working with networking containers? You think it's a good choice in contrast to a Java dev job for a big company? Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, I would take that job. You're asking me my opinion, but I'm bringing my preferences to it, so you got to do your own thing. So, so, so somebody... Wait, I say it was a flu and says in Twitch, just got a call for an internship placement. It's a big startup working with networking and containers. In other words, cloud native. Do you think it's a good choice in contrast to Java, a Java developer job for a big company? My opinion on that is that the Java developer job is going to pay you way more money. And the other job is going to be more fun and valuable. I would take I would take the networking container job, no problem. I actually did this. I took a Java job at IBM and I never did Java. <laughs> Containers are great. I just said containerize a 30-year-old application for my new job. No more development VMs and servers just for someone to edit code and build on. Oh my God. Base path, congrats. Cheers. That's that's what it's about right there. That's what it's about. Yeah, I mean. Not to mention, if you if you learn networking in container, which is probably going to involve Kubernetes and that kind of thing, then you like leave that job and make double the salary someplace else because the Java jobs are always going to be there. If you have Java skills, you need to pull back on them. I, I, I'll give you the short version of this. I've done this video before. I really truly believe that once you get a tech job, and sometimes it's hard to get the first one or your internship, right? But once you get one, you should be on your own. You should be pursuing development skills. And maybe not like really, really deep computer science things. It always benefits everybody to learn, you know, link lists and things like that. That's not, you know, 
just in general, because you can apply those tech, those principles to other things. Uh, I go back and forth on it. I've, I've, I slam on, you know, data st structures and algorithms all the time because they're not really practical for everybody, but you need them. But my point I'm trying to make is, let's say you get an ops job, right? If you learn how to code in Java and all that stuff, it will always, you know, be something you can, you can, you can combine. So now you're the, now you're the, you know, the one ops person on the team who has coding ability. And then what? Then you start doing coding for the system stuff. So being able to play both sides of the ops and apps, you know, fence is always a good thing career wise. It's a little bit hard to maintain really solid skills. But I personally think if you're not coding for your job, that you should be coding someplace else all the time. Not a lot of people want to do that as a technologist, and that's fine. You don't have to do that. But I, but I think you should be. This is why you see me coding Go and stuff because I don't want to lose my Go and Bash skills. I got Bash skills all the time because it's part of my core thing here, Python, whatever. The point is, I think you should, you should keep, you should be able to be a software developer as required, and you should be able to be a, a software infrastructure imp person as well. And then you, the 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 full stack. If you're going to ask me, that's that's what full stack is. And, it, and that's more like a Gilfoil. Like Gilfoil can build Anton, run his own Bitcoin, and mo co code Java better than Dinesh. Because he's he's a true full-stack engineer. He's actually an electronics, elect, you know, um, a computer engineer as well as, as all the other stuff. He knows how to solder and shit. If, you, if you're going to use the term full-stack engineer to me, that means you need to know all of that stuff. A full-stack engineer knows embedded. They know electronics. They know... You know, they, they know all of this stuff related to computer science and, and programming, and they also know operations, networking, and all that. So to be a call yourself a full stack engineer, I mean, there's, there's you know, a very small percentage of people who actually qualify for that title, in my opinion. I think a lot of, a lot of people throw that. Full stack developer course has been totally abused by the web, the web, web world, and that just means, you know, node on, on, the, on the back end. <laughs> that's not true, I know, but that's what people put down. I'm a JavaScript programmer. I'm a one trick JavaScript. I'm a one one trick pony JavaScript developer who's decided to call myself something more important because it makes me feel better and hopefully I'll get a better job. It's true. All right, so our stuff is working. Our code is up and running. Uh, you know, I'm slamming on the JavaScript stuff. I don't mean to slam the community, but I just had to write JavaScript here. And if I didn't have the JavaScript background, the HTML, I couldn't have done this. I imagine there's people on our team right now who couldn't do this, and I'm not. I'm not slamming my team either. My team is full of operations infrastructure people, and they probably not written like ten lines of JavaScript in their life. They've written tons of Python, but you know. So th the point is, become don't don't stop learning. Like learn other things. Learn things that are outside of your comfort zone. And you know, I'm looking at myself here. That means trying to learn C or even assembly and stuff like that. Uh, I really have been working in that direction. I'm already a full stack dev, but never really felt that because I do not understand the underlying systems. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't, you, if you don't know HTTP, if you can't describe the HTTP protocol and how it works, I don't think you have any business calling yourself full stack anything. And there's a lot of people who have no idea how HTTP works. They don't even know what it stands for. Uh, another comment. One thing I have been thinking about as well is when you make design decisions, you have to know about the possibilities and constraints of your infrastructure to come up with a good software design. Absolutely. Especially when you're working with, uh, in hip microservices. Yeah, boy, I could, I couldn't agree more. Kind of need infrastructure knowledge to be good at software design. I, yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. Right. I, I, if I had a dollar for every time as an engineer, as a, a system administrator, the old school term that some development group came to me and said, put this in your infrastructure. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I, I probably have like $8. <laughs> when I was at Nike, I had to like talk to them. I was like, you can't put, if you put this in your website, it will make your site unviewable by everybody because it was so heavy. The design team came to me and they said, we want this. And I was like, no, this is the nineties, right? Seriously, this, the shit they wanted to put on, it looked great. They, they thought they were dealing with some Photoshop app. <laughs> they had no idea. I was like, you cannot put this huge eight by 10, you know, 
JPEG image on every single page. I don't care how much precaching you do. And they, they had no idea. They had no idea because, because they're not, they have no operational sense, right? They could barely probably tell you what memory is. Memory is what allows me to have more Photoshop things open at the same time. So, and that was the design team. So that's to be fair, they were not programmers at all. But I, but we've had that problem with programmers before too. Programmers will think, hey, they got unlimited resources, or they'll throw some shit down, and they don't. And actually, that's the really great thing about containers is you can say, Kubernetes in particular, Kubernetes, you can say every single application that runs in the Kubernetes cluster according to this gatekeeper policy must have these constraints set up. And if you want to, you can go further. We don't, but you can go further and say you can't have more than this much RAM, period. And then they're like, what? But you can give it to developers and say, hey, go make a container that has that much RAM in it, that, that never exceeds that, and that number of CPUs. Same with VM stuff. Uh, Crystal Crumble asks a question, do you still recommend Minikube for learning Kubernetes? Absolutely. However, um, not for very long. So you're gonna, I'm going to talk a lot about this tomorrow during Kubernetes training, but I actually just ran this past my subject matter expert again, uh, my, the friend at Tech Systems who's been helping me. And um, the the direction to truly learn Kubernetes, you you got you have to put aside kind of Minikube at some point. So the debate I'm having with myself is when to do that. And uh, I'm going to talk about this tomorrow. But my tendency is going to be to do enough kind of Minikube to just experiment with it. I mean, very little, maybe a couple of weeks, two, three weeks to know you have it so you can try out different things. Uh, it's really great for testing Helm charts and stuff like that, right? I mean, that's the kind of thing that it's good at, right? Minikube, mini, Minikube and, and Kind are really good for testing applications for CCAD kind of things. But if you actually want to move over into the infrastructure space and kind of understand how Kubernetes works, including certs and installation and you know, all that, you gotta you gotta leave it aside, and you have to start moving to the virtual world. So you have to have to use virtual machines either on your own computer in the cloud, or you have to start provisioning your own you know computers locally, which is which is the final phase, the final of evolution, I guess, where you would go do that. Uh, one of the reasons you keep a virtual with low memory and process, see if the simple uh, webbook can can handle. It. Yeah, that too. So so I my goal, and I, I talked about this. I'm gonna talk about it tomorrow again. My goal is to upgrade my computer to get a Threadripper with, with more than 32 cores. I'm hoping for 64 cores. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I have all the hardware to make a rack if I wanted to. But the time that it takes to set up a cluster in the rack is far longer than the time it takes to provision a virtual a set of virtual machines. And so, so this the long story short, the TLDR of what I'm saying is... Yes, I like Minikube, but I hate that Minikube is missing a bunch of things. And without any solicitation, the SME that I was talking to said the same thing. He said, you know, I eventually got annoyed by the fact that Minikube is not really Kubernetes. It's missing these pieces. And, and he would make decisions based on that. And then he would go into his infrastructure and he would have the wrong information. Right. So, you know, how etcd is handled, how certs are handled, no cube ADM. A bunch of things were... Where he had wrong burned into his 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 brain in terms of how to deal with infrastructure on Kubernetes, and had he just even done it with just setting up a bunch of virtual machines and doing his own installs using kubeadm or whatever, he would have been that far ahead. He wouldn't have been burned by those 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 inconsistencies. So, I have just about concluded to put Minikube to the side for my training. Um, I'm still going to use Minikube and Docker. To help beginners get started in you know developing SSH and I mean making connections, practicing SSH, blah blah blah. But for me personally, uh, I'm going to spend all of my effort building an actual Kubernetes cluster on virtual machines and not ones that are in the cloud. So the problem with that is that I only have eight, eight, eight CPUs right now, and no none of them have any. You know I don't have. You know I I don't. So I need I need some more CPUs. I'm probably only going to be able to do two node cluster that way. It may turn out that I can't do it at all on this computer, and then then I have to decide whether I want to get my my cluster hardware in the other room together. Form data object, which takes form element as constructor argument, it can give you key value pair fields. With that, you don't need to select every element like inputs. Really? Where there's a form data object. 
I was looking for the four. We were looking for that the other day. Thank you. Yeah. That would be way better. Let's do that instead. Thank you for letting me know that. I really appreciate that. Let's comment these out. I had a feeling there was one that was already was already, I was looking for it. If you go watch the video yesterday, I was looking for it, but I couldn't remember it. Form data. How relative? How recent is it? Is it pretty recent? Yeah. All right. So let's do this. I'm gonna do console log form dot. Form data to get that right, which takes form element as construction argument. Oh, form data, uh, form. It's pretty old. Didn't realize. I haven't seen that one. I haven't used it. I don't mind admitting it. That sounds cool though. Please use the new operator. Oh, of course. I mean, I should probably make a new one. Let's do that. Let's do, let's do data. Let's do new form data form and just dump the data. I wonder if it's already been escaped. Wouldn't that be awesome? No, it won't be because it's a map, right? Form data. Form data. Oh, shit. Append, even. Seeing me not quote HTML arguments. I don't have any HTML arguments right now. You cannot like it. I don't give a shit. It's the standard. <laughs> it's the standard. I don't care. It can paint you all you want. It's it's the HTML5 standard. It's not even deprecated or suggested against. People do it all the time. Coding shit unnecessarily always bothered me. Now there, if you if you use names that got wild ass characters in them like dot and dash, then you deserve what you get. <laughs> yeah, sue me. I any anything I can do to simplify so that it's easier to read, I will do. And yeah, so uh, get get all um, has keys sets. Yeah, so this is a hundred percent array. Uh, oh my, I have some stuff. Form data prototype object. I mean, it's a it's a it's a form data. It's an object, of course. So entries. So, I mean, hmm. so how, let's see, can you index it? It has has and set and all that stuff. Hmm. I wonder if you can, I could just do a for each on the entries. I need to, or I could do for of. Delete native code. I wonder if I can actually delete profile out of it. No, no, because we still want the form data. Otherwise, I wouldn't submit it, right? So we need that. It's a got a, it's got getters and setters. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's. I'm still gonna have to join this stuff. It would just be instead of for field and inputs, it would be for it would be a for each or some shit. For how about this? For for datum. <laughs> for field. You just sent me something. I did. For field of data. What are you? What's up? Well, I, I just had a realization as I was. Okay, you're you're on record here. Just letting you know. Okay. You can talk. I just 
Well, I'm listening. Unless you well, don't want it to be saved for time and all eternity, just let me know. Well, I will leave the names of, uh, out to protect the... Yes, it's a good but idea. What I was realizing as I, I emailed you the promotional video yeah. is that this experience, especially if it's two years, is grad school. Oh, boy. Because I have access to the facilities I wanted in grad school. And yeah. And I have professional artists coming through. Yeah. Work and curators. Yeah. And patrons. I, that was kind of obvious as soon as you got it to me. It was like I know, but I, I think it really hit me when I did the math for and I yeah. did a spreadsheet on how much. And then when lost. you next to Penland, you're going to be in permanent grad school, pretty much. Yeah, but this is this so. is literally this is actually more like grad school than Penland is. Really? Because, because it's got all of the stuff. Because I'm going to be having artists and curators coming through talking. Oh about my work God! Time. It's kind of like it's kind of like the. The purchase thing all over yeah, again. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's it's yeah. literally a college experience. Like wow. I get a studio space. I get the facilities, and I have professionals coming in and talking to me. That's I'm crazy. Work, and I get to show my work there. That's. It literally is grad school. That's a very good thing. I'm having and put with the, so there are the professional residencies are three months at a time. Yeah. So that means that that they, they I think they have three a year. That means that every time. New professional artists cycle through. Yeah. That residency that I will be meeting and interacting with. You see, which that's is what you go to grad school for. Yeah. Right. The whole connection I thing. I think I like totally digested. Because it's because it. it's got the connector, the whole like four yeah. reasons to go to college. It's like going to Yale. To to get a skill, to meet people, to you know find you yourself to teach, and to. Uh, yeah, and to do your laundry. So those Did are you say yeah. I have to do my laundry? Well, that's the f number four reason to be an adult. You have to learn to adult. But it's funny because there was no grad school available in Charlotte. Yeah, and, and like, I know, this and this is, like is I've just made it. the closest thing to it. And unlike other people, you know, I'm gonna milk it for oh God, no. every educational. Yeah, I know. It's, worth. it's gonna be annoying. I feel sorry for your cubicle neighbors. I know it's true. <laughs> like I just want to sit here and draw. Why, why are you trying to push us so much? <laughs> and I did the math. It's less than going to. A state school. Oh my God, that's so crazy. For a year. Yeah, I know. It costs it's the, the the rent, and if I go five days a week. Oh my God. With gas, it'll be five thousand dollars. <sighs> my head exploded. Yeah. And the cheapest like state school is like like what six thousand a semester. Yeah, I know. Just the rent alone is like the free parking downtown. What's crazy is if you didn't have what you needed, there's like so many university resources downtown. You could just like. I'm gonna be connected to everybody. I know. So you could just say, "Oh, hey, my private studio is a block away down yeah, here." That's what I'm saying. This is literally me going. You could, you could uh, seriously, you need to get that whole bells and whistles granny bike and put it in your cubicle so you can like ride it to C3 Lab and stuff like that. You're that close to stuff. I know. So you'll be able to. It's crazy. It's like again, it's like college. You're riding around college. campus. It is literally if you're like, going to grad school. You're right past your mural, your for mural that you did over here. Possible thing, and not only that, oh but if God. I get the idea for a good project, which McCall will show, I can apply for grant money to pay for it. Oh, oh my God, the universe has big things in store. I was like, you don't need to go to grad school. I got you. Big things. I got you. I got okay, you. Let's go walk. But I said All right. my spreadsheet. Yeah. Oh, your your costs. Include this value. I should have right. done right. 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 See ya. Sorry, my wife's really excited. She got, I'm not supposed to say. You got. You can tell pretty much what's going on, right? She got a premier coveted studio space in downtown Charlotte. At, just don't announce who that, who it is. I, I'm not telling them who. I just said it was a premier studio space. <laughs> I can't say because if somebody's watching the stream... It hasn't been announced yet, and it could, it could, it could maybe go the wrong way. I don't want to make anybody upset. She, she got a space that artists who've been around for, forever would just die over to get, and she just got it. She got, she got, she on Monday she gets to move in. <laughs> it's just crazy. Getting, you understand that getting a really elite studio space for the price that she got it. Oh, it's insane. I, I almost don't think we should talk about it because somebody the, among the artist community is going to hear it and they're going to be pissed. <laughs> they're going to be pissed. They're like, you know, and she didn't, she didn't, she didn't do anything. She didn't like, you know, sleep with anybody besides me <laughs> to get it 
So she's super excited. Is super excited because her her career is just gonna to blow up this year. How's it going, Key Macro? Uh, there is no JavaScript on the screen. Ah, <laughs> uh, JavaScript is fine. All right, so so so, what was I actually looking for? I'm oh, not this one. The transform data object into query string. Ooh, I didn't know about that one. Thank you very much. God, you guys are great. I had to just do this every day, all day. You guys could like help me do the hard part. I got no shame. I don't. Not knowing the what method to look up among the 500 elements. No shame, not knowing that. I'm just gonna tell you. So URL search parameters object that returns form data object into into a query like string. That is pretty amazing. I did not know that was a thing. Are you guys learning stuff too? <laughs> Cause I am, this is fantastic. So what you're saying is I don't need to do this at all. Fuck. Do you realize what you're saying? If I, if I understand you correctly, I'm going to be able to do this. I am. I'm going to make a new form data object and then I'm going to set this. Whoops, let's do this. And then we can just do this, right? Holy shit. Profile value. My spelt app. A spelt. I, I see. I am intrigued by spelt. I am really intrigued by spelt. Yeah, right. Right. So much bash. <laughs> Yeah, profile value, that's what a Q. So, so profile value equals, what is it? Oh, new URL search parameter form data to string. Shit. I would, I would never have get that on my own. Search params. I had a feeling that you could use query string in encoding. I just didn't know what the commands were. I didn't want to look for them. So data. I think I can actually factor that out too. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> shall we, shall we play a game? Oh my God. <laughs> it totally did it. The problem is, is I have to remove the, the profile from there. No, I don't. No, I don't. I can leave it in. It doesn't matter. Cause I'm going to skip over it anyway. Yup. Um, so, I mean, cores equals, wait, oh my God, look what it does though. It makes the profile value. It's, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, I can't skip it. Can you skip it? How can I skip it? New your person values. values. I need to take the profile one out. So what if I do this? What if I do params equals new URL search params? No, no, no. I just need to delete it from the form data. Yeah. That's all I need to do. Data dot delete. Because this is this the form data. It's not. It's a new object. So we're fine. Profile. Yeah. Hey, did I get it? <laughs> I got it on my own. Thank God. I'm not a completely hopeless web developer. I was Nike's webmaster. Let you. <laughs> just let you know. It's a lot of time. All right. So, uh, cores equals RAM data to GPU GPU blah. All right. So. Um, that wins the prize. What you guys know about, um, God, there's a, there's a game for coders that, that you win points if you write the most elegant solution. What's it called? I want to say check, check IO. I think it's called check IO. 
but that this one would win the, the the points for the most elegant solution no not apl q smart ass <laughs> oh i've been watching i've been watching the university of surrey speaking of england and stuff there's this there's this really amazing i've watched it twice all the way through now there's this really really amazing documentary about quantum mechanics in on on amazon prime right now it's a two it's a two episode uh, really really basic introduction to quantum mechanics it is amazing and i just thought of you mostly because of the you know european connection there um yeah i think i think we're good to go that is like so much easier i cannot stand it look at how clean that is god damn that is really, really clean. Uh, yeah, kudos to the friends of mine who made that nice and clean like that. If I put like an emoji in here or something, it's kind of it should be do it. Oh boy. Yep. Input profile. Oh, I should probably do the value. Yep. Yep. I mean, it should escape that now. Yep. Oh, it left a star in there. I guess that doesn't get an escape. This is so much better. This is so good. This makes me feel good. <laughs> I just feel happy because it's like the way it should be. All right. I'm going to take a five minute break. I'm going to walk away for a second. And then uh, it's because my, also because my ass is tired. And, I'm kidding. And I'm, I'm going to come back. We now have, we've completed this. So I'm going to actually commit this before I walk away. So, uh, status, uh, what's our log look like? Uh, expanding the foam, expand, expanding the HTML form for profile. So our JavaScript profile field consolidation. Uh, yep. We did that. Add image, image name validation into the keep spotter note. We're not going to do that yet. Uh, okay. Complete Java get, uh, field consolidation. So that's done. We got these other things. So add dash a dot commit, uh, add JavaScript, uh, prof profile, uh, value consolidation that's what i'm calling it so there you go that's it you can go look at the github i'll take a take a quick five be right back
All right, I'm back earlier, but we're about done with this template here. Um, we're kind of embarking on the next part of this, which is how do we organize the profile so that they're pretty? And I actually might create a few different variations on this so that people can pick from them. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, what are we, what are we actually making here? So, you know, I'm going to need to apply some styles to this thing at some point. Um, I hate that this is taking time, but it's like crazy because the stuff that was like really, really hard, uh, it's going to taking about the same time as it takes me to make a fucking web form. <laughs> So, I'm not proud of that, but that's true. Um, so, now we have to, like, bring our aesthetics to a head and make something that looks, you know, usable. This isn't. Um, so, I'm just trying to imagine what the thing would look like. So, we can, we have we can have it so that they have separate CPU cores. Um, we could have like separate GPUs. You should probably make that a radio button. How many GPUs? What GPU type? Um, yeah. I don't even know if these things can be passed to tell you the truth. So, so that's going to be interesting. Part of me is like, do we need to even have that other stuff in there for now? And uh, do we need to put some validation in there? So, 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 so. I mean, I wonder if we should put a label in here anyway. I mean, we can take, we can change the type to be uh, whatever, right? What are, I don't know all the farm types. I have to go look them again. I taught them for years. I just don't remember them. So, is there? It's not a radio. It's a. Um, I mean, I guess I guess make a select there. No, I don't like that. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to restrain myself from getting too pulled down into a bunch of stuff. I got to think about the design here. So. I mean, okay. So, 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 so. I'm going to turn these off for now. And the reason for that is I don't know if they are... I don't know how I can set them. I know that I can, but I got to do some more Python research to show that. Right. We're going to need to set those constraints in the cube spawner. And so I'm going to need to be able to make associations for these values to the cube spawner value. We already know Im image is the only one that we know works right now. So we're going to keep that one for now. And then we got the kind of script out of the way. So we don't have to deal with that again, but we should probably do some validation on the image first. And um, get it to look pretty and everything. And and this this might be a, a time for us to go look at the the actual Minikube service, which I think is still running. Let me just check. Yep. Okay. So so be open. We're gonna open a, our Jupyter Jupyter Hub. So here is the you know the one we had so far. Um, we should probably have like, I think we should just put name image here, right? Now the question is whether I'm going to want to use all of the same, I probably should. I probably should. Let me, let me check this. Uh, let me see if I can make my form more realistic. 
because this this form is using bootstrap you can tell see how it's doing all its resizing so what i could do to get this to be similar is i could like build this page i guess and i could load the uh i could load the other stuff like we could load um I mean, it's probably got bootstrap loaded up here. Yeah. Yeah, style minute. Yeah, it does. Require JS. Because they're using, they're using, you know, divisions of whatever. So if I'm going to actually do this, I need to, I don't know. I don't know how soon I have to do that, but. I'd like to be able to simulate that, and I don't know if I want to do that in my form independent because I'd have to pull in all these source scripts to do it. Yeah, it's got jQuery and everything in here. Shit. Well, jQuery comes with Bootstrap by default now, right? I think they, I think they built. No, there's the there's the Bootstrap. So, um, I don't. I mean, I don't know if I want to recreate this entire page or not. You know what I mean? Just for the just for just for this testing. Um. I mean, because you can't, the iteration takes so fucking long. I. You know, this is this is coming from the hub. I bet I could actually do live live editing on it. Let me try that. If I can do that, that would be faster than 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 modifying the form like I am doing here, just to get the base form values, which is fine. But if if that's true, then I can actually sort of do that development on on it, and that's a technique that that people have done in the past. So, okay, get pods. So we have the proxy, um, and the the hub. I'm pretty sure is where this is being presented from. Let's check. Yep, hub slash spawn. So, so let's go on that system for a sec. Let's go exec into that, into hub. Give me a bash script. And I think I can do it. I, I don't know if I have to restart it or not. That's the hard part, right? So, slash Etsy. I forgot where it is. It's in here for sure. Does that, is there a VI over here? Yeah, good. Thank God. Yeah, dash version. Eight point one. Hmm. All right. So this is another way to do this, right? That it'll be like live real time development, hopefully. I don't remember where it puts the Jupyter Hub stuff. I don't remember. I, I wanna say it's Etsy Jupyter Hub, but I don't remember. Maybe 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 VAR chart. Actually, that's written in the never mind. This is uh it's in the commands. So edit hub de deploy hub yeah and the container thing the the command will say what it's doing command here there we go jupyter hub config that's what i was looking for all right so we can go we can go get back on that server pretty fast huh don't you love that I love that. That's a, one of the coolest things about the whole container world is being able to get on systems like right away, containers. Um, so, so yeah, let's CD into these are local Etsy. This is where all of our configurations are. What my goal here is to be able to change a configuration and have it uh, still work uh, while it's while it's running. Yeah. And some of that stuff is being changed by the... I mean, th these things are supposed to be written. So w this is a little bit of a goose chase because we, we've got to find... We've got to find where that form is that's being, ex that's being done. And then we're going to tweak it directly so that we can still get all the bootstrap stuff in there, right? Uh, fucking lambdas. Um... So, 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 um, grep dash R, what's it called? I think it's called, yeah, 
options from form options form I mean if we find any any input HTML you know what that's probably it now if we can find anything that says input oh it's in the secret why would I write that in the secret that is the weirdest shit ever well, I would never have guessed that they put it under the secret directory why would they do that that doesn't make any sense. So, so there's my cube. I, I am so glad I looked that up because that is insane. No, wait, it says dot, dot. Why does it have dot, dot? Wait, wait, wait. What the fuck? I'm confused. All right, so these, this, this here, this here thing here, this chart stuff, this is where, yeah, there's our namespaces right there. Extra config, yep. It got all fucking crammed together. This is not easy to change. <laughs> this is the opposite of easy to change. So, so yeah. It looks like it's being passed in directly. It is. It's being passed in at runtime. It never makes it into a file. So there's no easy file for me to just go change and make iterative changes on. I'd have to go change this piece of shit. Yeah. Which I'm not doing. That's even harder than... But this is the Helm chart. That's what I don't understand. Helm chart. Name Jupiter Hover. I don't understand why there's a Helm chart there, but I guess that's just the way it is. I mean, we found our input, so let's see if we can find anything else. Maybe there's another one somewhere that I missed. Nope, there's nothing. There's just that one value in the cube spawner. Yep. I mean, it, I don't know. What I'm trying to avoid is what I'm about to do. Okay, so I'm going to do it the slow way. And then we, I'm trying to find a faster way to do what I'm about to do. So here is our form. Hi, Taniwa. So here's our form. We're going to go ahead and turn that off. And we're going to go back. So we've been iterating on this other form development by using this. So we can text our form and our consolidation commands, et cetera. And that just prints them all out here, which is all good and well did any. This is just to, just to test the JavaScript that we added. That's really all it is. So, but that code, in fact, we just changed the code. So there we go. Yep. It's just, the, now it's just this, right? Boom, 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 boom. So we get that here. It gives us the whole, the whole thing. Uh, and now we just need to input that. So we'll go to the form. Actually, do I have that open somewhere? Yeah. All right. So, 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 so we can do this. We can say, and then I don't need all that stuff. Let's just do this. Let's do this. So right. Tempo is going to say already exists. I knew that. I knew you were going to do that. I knew it, and I still did it. So then we do this. And now we have our doc type stuff. Now I'm going to get some, I'm going to pull a lot of this out of here. So don't have this, don't have this, don't have this. And we're going to need to pull out. Uh, I'm going to leave the to-do in here. You got a new monitor. Nice. I love my extra monitor. That's like right up. You guys see me looking at it all the time. It's like right above my, I didn't, I completely underestimated how valuable it is to have a monitor on top of your monitor because it, because it's still in your field of vision. You don't have to like look a long way. I really love it. Um, all right. So no doc type. 
So for this is what we do need though. All right, so and we have the ID equals image. So I'm gonna need to indent how many here? One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna need to indent six. Now I'll get squished together anyway, so so yeah. Go indent that six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There. You got the curved one? I almost got that. It's like comes in like an eight foot box. <laughs> it doesn't fit in your doorway. I looked at that one really seriously. I looked at that one really seriously and I'm so glad I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, I read all the reviews on everything. I, I, I'm, I'm just going to say I'm really glad because I, I didn't want to, um, I personally didn't want to deal with the, um, with the with the crap with the, the splitting of the monitor and stuff. I I'm a big fan now. I'm I'm I know it doesn't look as clean, but I'm a big fan of 20 inch monitors and then getting lots of them, because as long as you have you know enough HDMI ports and your stuff, because because then you can reconfigure them however you want. You can have one be 4K. You can have another one be 1080P. So you're doing your streaming from that one. Yeah, I just have one matter. Yeah, if you're if you're my particular case does not lend itself well to that because I stream a lot. If I didn't stream, I might be more inclined to do that. Yeah, second one in portrait exactly. I like having a number of. I have a. a I have my monitor monitor here, which has got my OBS on it. I can see exactly what you see, and then I got my music on that one, and then my laptop right here for work and then I have a KVM that switched my main monitor between work and not and then I have an, another one right up here so if I had another monitor it would be too many actually I don't even know what I would do with it it would probably just slow everything down but what I really do like is that I can have one of the monitors set to 4k and the other monitor can be set to to 1080p so that I can I can OBS that without any compression or anything so that's that's what I'm doing with that I might need to change that though. I might need to change it and start using a capture card, because because the the Witcher stuff is is killing me. I can't play the Witcher stuff is too janky. So if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be a real streamer, I probably should start putting a capture card on, and just using the capture card for everything. It can split a second signal in a few ways. Yeah, yeah. If it can split the signal, then you're good to go, right? Because then you have two feeds, right? It does pip and all that. Yeah, mine does pip too. I just I don't know why something about Pop OS, the new Pop OS update stopped my pit from working. It kind of bummed me out. But generally speaking, I shouldn't be doing that stuff anyway. Um, all right. Well, we've now got our new form with our JavaScript here. And I want to see if it's actually going to build. So we're going to do that. And I'm pretty much done with this window for now. In fact, we need to consolidate our windows down. Oh, yeah. Yep. Definitely need to consolidate the windows down. Uh, oh, this is the server code. This is the go code for the serve command. And here's serve. This is the one that's doing the form thing. I, I don't know if I need that anymore. Code for that is in my repo. Um, yep, I'm going to go ahead and exit and then Tmux back in, vlog, log, I'm just resetting my windows, my, all right, so, for Pi-hole, I, I, people have tried Pi-hole, always leave it eventually, most of the people that I've talked to do Pi-hole eventually give it up because it's too zealous. It's it sounds like a good idea on paper, but it's it's really hard to manage. That's that's what I've heard. I, I good people I really trust that are they started they use it for a while and then they're like no. Because it's yeah, maybe it's gotten better. Let me know. Yeah. It's, yes, right. But the problem is that it's like you can't say, oh, I want to see stuff on this page and not on this other page. It destroys all of it. It doesn't even go into your network. And that's, I think that's overzealous. 
sometimes you actually have to enable it, right? For other reasons. And so I, I like the idea in principle. It, it just, it's, it doesn't really work practically as far as I'm concerned. Complete JavaScript profile consolidation did that. Add imaging validation to forms that we haven't done that yet. To combine it, we did that. Yeah, we did that. Resource profiles, add cores, the source resource parameters, okay, that's coming. Uh, add image form validation to JavaScript and portals, but that's what we're going to do now. It's just fancy DNS mask for me now. Oh, you did? I didn't know that was an option. So you can just do, you can just turn off the, the block list and then just keep the DMS masking. Interesting. That's something worth looking into. Yeah, I don't care about people on my DNS, but but yeah, I could I could see that. Huh. Best best router web UI. I yeah, that's another reason. So like yeah. That kind of PF sense replacement, right? You can use it as a router. Yeah. That that might be fun too. Yeah, I did mention PF Sense actually, same time you did. <laughs> yeah, PF Sense is crazy fun to play with. The first time I SSH'd into my consumer-based, you know, cable modem, I was so excited. I love that. It's BSD, absolutely BSD. BSD routers. This is the thing about BSD. BSD is still the world's most secure operating system. I'm convinced because it never changes. <laughs> they never updated. I mean, network people, network people widely regard BSD as the safest OS for routed operating systems. Free BSD, TCP, IP, yeah, literally copy the code. I know. It's like if you have, if you're making a router or anything Wi-Fi related, it's running BSD. It's, it's, if, yeah. That's interesting. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I tell that to people and they challenge me on it and stuff. I'm, but most, I've talked to a lot of router people, like engineers and they are big bsd fans juniper is free bsd yep yep and and i heard i i've heard people suggest that the reason is because because they uh, they really don't make changes to the bsd source code unless it's a unless they have a completely different opinion of how source code should be managed they don't add new features pretty much at all they they say what's broken they they are probably the most conservative distro linux dist or unix type distro and the, on the planet um built in for their yeah they had kernel features built in for this is true too yeah ubuntu your router runs ubuntu the drive yeah something needs the hardware for sure but but the the the, the principles and sort of the culture of the bsd team is is like why do we need it they start like every consideration for why do we need that Okay, fine. We got new hardware. We got to put a driver for that. Okay, fine. Why do we need that? Well, because it's rewritten in Rust or it's rewritten in this. No, no, no. <laughs> they don't. This is why everybody loves BSC for security because they don't change shit unless you have to. Yeah, unified user cha tool chain and kernel for sure. Yeah. So, so you know, would you put, would I put BSC as my desktop? Hell no. <laughs> Never. I know people try it. I'm like, I'm I don't want to play around with Xconfig anymore. I'm done. Kernel and GNU core utilities are two separate orgs. Really? FreeBSD core and kernel are the same org. Really? Did not know that. See, that makes so much sense. That I mean from a management because then somebody's not gonna make a security flaw. Yeah. Uh to, to, to question about undergrad undergrad with programming in Linux. What sort of internships? Make sure you check out the InfluxDB um, internship. It's a really good one with a really great company. It's a lot of Go coding. Go and Rust, actually. And uh, I helped place the guy there. He's, they'll, he got the, that the internship. It's a good one. Um, if you like security, the NSA and the FBI have internships. BC Core Utils are in the same repo as a kernel. What? That's crazy. GNU also tries to target all the weird non-Linux systems out there. Yeah, absolutely. 
that's why BSD is like, no, fuck it. We don't need it. <laughs> We're just going to keep it nice and tight in house. This is the reason I changed my boost references from Linux to Unix. Because it's you're really learning Unix. You're not learning Linux LS, you know. It's like and people don't know the difference. Uh, the average person on the street here in Twitch just could not tell you the difference between Unix and Linux. I was like, what's is BSD Unix or Linux? That's a trick question, actually. <laughs> BSD is BSD. <laughs> BS, BSD is BSD. You can't call it Unix for technically because it's copyright. People do though. Unix like. <laughs> Our restaurant chain is a McDonald's-like rec restaurant chain. <laughs> I don't know why we got. What am I doing? Focus, Rob. So you gotta do this template thing. I gotta rebuild. B apply. So I'm resetting my resetting my hub with my new template, uh, which frankly should not appear much differently. It's just gonna have uh, some other some extra stuff in it. Yeah, take your time. I'm only going to be here till three, but I'm doing this is all work related. Uh, we we figured out how to pass data into Jupyter Hub to set the image, in case you're wondering. Firefox bookmarks and write your own bookmark manager. Hell yeah, that's a fun project. There's there's so many fun projects that you could you know pull together out there, if you take some time. Uh, close you. Reload you. Oh shit. Did you see that? Image equals Jupiter data science notebook lastest. <laughs> I literally wrote lastest. Latest. I actually found it though. Warning failed to apply whatever. Uh, I've been, that's because I'm printing on my, my, wait, wait, default image tag, image equals blah, blah, blah. Look at that. Shit. Okay. We have to unparse that thing. Obviously I knew this, but I just forgot. So add the function to combine the formula profile string, add a JS function, add Python function to unpack the, uh, profile uh string on back end so that's what we got to do now it's not too hard probably a function that does it so put that in the values file so in this thing here this gets the this is what's grabbing our form our form data and Wait, what? Did I delete something? Options form. I did. I broke something. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. no. I just, that's just a function. And then I call the function later. Okay. Keep spawner option form. Option form. Okay. Options equal blah. Options profile. Form data. Profile. Must be profile. Validate profile is actually name of image. So we have to get this. And that's what this is about. So failed to apply default image tag, image equals Jupyter, blah, 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 right? So what I need to do is I need to un-URL encode the profile thing. Um, yeah. So I need to do this. I need, I need to say data data equals form data but we need to to unprocess this we need to expand it so i need to look for a function that can un. what's the python function for that python function to unpack i don't know url 
encoding query string. Uh, how do you URL encode a query string in Python? How about unencoded? Let's go see that. Query string equals blah. Yeah, no, I don't want that. I want to undo that. URL lib quote plus is URL quote. URL lib is probably the one I want. I'm going to have to import URL lib. Here we go. And then three URL lib packages have been broken into small components. You'll use URL lib parse quote plus. Interesting. I hope that that's a built in and we're going to have trouble. Uh, quote plus. Yeah, you know what I can do here? I can put this down here. I can do data, data equals urlib parse quote plus data. Yep. Let's see what happens with that. See, but see, the problem with this now is I have to redeploy every time. Yep. And I don't, that's the annoying thing. So I was trying to avoid this redeployment um, by doing it all from just, you know, the form edits and stuff. But then it's like, how much do you mock it up? You know, some of it doesn't need to be mocked. If you spend too much time mocking shit up, sometimes it's better to just not. Server is starting up. It's not my server. API request failed. Okay. Am I printing something? I must be. Server is stopping. Is it now? Is it now? Uh, K get PO dash and Jovian. What are we talking about? Is it finally dead? Okay, there we go. Oh, what? All right, there we go. Image equals Jupyter Data Science. No, because, so that's what we wanted. But, uh, I'm not going to see it do its thing. We need to, I, this is the, the sucky thing here is, is there's no, there's no way to, to, I don't know of a way to log it so I can see it while I'm working on it because there's nothing, there's no way to, ref, to refresh it back to you. Uh, so, so yeah, let's do this. Let's do, I mean, oh, there's a good error. Okay, here we go. Control based kind status required invalid details name Jupyter of Joven pod causes reason field value required message required value field spec containers image. So that means it didn't get the image. Oh, because we didn't do it. No, we did not. Um We did not. We should have probably done this. We probably should have done options. Uh, profile. Because you have parse quote data. No, this is, what is this going to be? What is this going to return? This is going to return a map, right? Um, data map. And then... I don't know though, so you know. Actually, let me test that in Python. So Python three import URL lib parse. All right. So all right. URL lib dot parse dot quote parse oh quote well, plus um 
sum equals thing other equals another thing. Some thing that is not what we wanted. We want to parse that stuff. Nope. I want the opposite of that. So I'm just guessing. Has no attribute parse. PyDoc URL lib parse. No, really? Fine. URL lib dot parse. Hey, Vera. Yeah, I know I want an inverse. I'm trying to find it. Parse. Uh, I'll see here. Oh, there it is. URL parse. I focus on splitting your string into its components. Um, I don't want the URL. I want uh, just the query string portion. URL parse equals zero. Parse result equals schema. No, fuck no. I just want the URL part, the query string part. So uh, There's definitely a query string thing. It's probably query string to map. There should be anyway. RGR. Um, yeah. Let's see the schema argument. No name tuple. I, I just have to, we're just looking for the, the appropriate, you know, thing here. URL parse. Yeah. Parse results. Don't want that. Uh, I want just the query part. Allow fragment. Parse QS. There we go. Parse QS. Um, yep. All right. Let's try it. Let's try it. Parse QS. It should give us a dictionary, I'm thinking. Yep. It always points to arrays because if you can have the more things, so that's what we want. So, um, so yeah. So yeah, data parse QS. QS, so that's just a string, right? I think it is a data map. And then, uh, yeah, the rest is actually not hard. It's guaranteed to have profile. If it doesn't, here. Validate, we'll validate the image. I'll, I'll keep that to do in there. We'll come back and do that. But assuming that's there and we want to get the same thing we just had, we say options profile. And we're going to pass that um, uh, data map uh, dot get. And we, we're going to have the default image here too, but right now I'm going to change this. We're going to have a default image if you can't find the image, if it's not in the map. But but because uh, otherwise it will throw an error. But we'll we'll do that later. So right now this value is profile. Right? Yep. Profile. No. Image. Image. It should be image. Yep. So we're all set up to pass other profile parameters like CPU and GPU and all that. But we're not we're we don't have that quite. I mean we've got the it's in the input data now, so we have to figure out how to make those appear, make them nice and pretty and stuff. Um, so three. Uh, we'll go ahead and apply this to restart the Helm chart for this. It reminds me, we need to do, we need to make deploy chart so it doesn't have to be uninstalled the Helm chart to reapply it. If there's an option to do that, I don't know about it. That's stuff I'll be coming to later, but. Launch server, yes, please. 
lastest. What is this one? All right, so that's still in there. I need to drop that console log message. Don't let me forget. And then we click start. The latest attempt failed. Or close before response received. Virtual server uncheck the message port close before. That might be because it's down. I might have to. We, we might have an error on there. I'm. I probably I, that that seems to me like I have a. I that seems to me like I have a Python error, because it because it closed down the receipt the thing handling it. So yeah, it didn't even give me a chance. So it's probably a Python syntax error. But it's harder to find those because I have to go all the way down in before. Yeah, there's definitely errors on here. So, K logs, hub. Yep, here it is. Connection closed. It it tried to find the images. Like I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> See, previous spawn from Java failed. This is the image trade of keep spawner instance expected Unicode string, not the list. Jupiter, Jupiter, data is the latest because I didn't select the, select the first item. Well, there you go, boys and girls. <laughs> uh, yep. So we actually want zero. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Actually, fuck this. Fuck the get. I'm just going to do it like this. Yep. And... No, data mop and image room. I mean, it's we know it's going to be there. If it's not there, it should throw an error. So yeah, Python, Python with JavaScript. There's a bunch of everything today. So, so fuck the default. Fuck the default. We're gonna do that with validation right here. So yeah, let's do that. Let's go ahead and say. Because I'm going to need to validate the image anyway. So I'll say image equals data map image. And it's the first item. And listen, that's because the query string stuff has to be multiples if you have multiples. I think image. And then I'll do the validation. Or leave me a spot for the validation later. Uh, B apply. Wait for this to go through. I am kind of happy though with the mini cube turnaround time. It hasn't been taking a lot, very long for me to turn this around and test it as I go. I don't, I'm not having to deal with, with other methods. So this is, this is, this has been a win. All right. Reload. Uh, latest. Okay. I don't really don't need any more, but start. This should work. Yep. Dev tools failed to load. And there it is. All righty. Uh, if this works, then I go back to the hub control. Stop your server. Index is start at zero. <laughs> Have you read my stuff on that? That's where they should start. Lewis starts at one. I did a huge rant against that because we had a kid. I had a kid I was helping get an AP computer science question wrong because it said, what index number do things start at and the answer was one and the language was java <laughs> seriously and i got so fucking mad i made a huge blog about it i was like index is i was like i was just railing on i was so pissed because this ap computer science teacher told this kid to his face he was wrong to say that indexes start at zero and, and he went back and goes, C does, and all these other languages, Java does, Python does. Where are you getting that from? And he goes, well, for the sake of this course, indexes start with one. It's I actually copied and pasted it straight out of the AP Computer Science materials from whatever the fuck that organization is that's responsible for that. It's such a clusterfuck. It really is. It's so sad. The state of The state of computer education in America is so bad. Because they can't keep up. Fortran is one too, by the way. <laughs> I have all the people who are coming out of the woodwork say like which language to start with one. So Fortran, Lua, um, there was another one. 
Julia. I guess Julia. Yeah. I'm gonna start a base. I'm gonna start a base image this time. It did it! Yay! All right, so my parsing is all working. Now it's just time to make the, the template prettier. So, uh, I have more than one hub running. I like one makes more sense. Yeah. Well, the, the thing that made me annoyed by it is that, I mean, so like the KNRC book, it's the first chapter is chapter zero, and they do it on purpose. The, the use of zero, starting to count with zero, has become a cultural phenomenon in the programmer world. So to have that level of like brain dead, you know, cluelessness in the AP test with regard to computer culture in general, it just says a lot about the whole movement to me. It's like if you, you know, if you're so dumb that you, not dumb, if you're so disconnected from popular computer programming culture and computer science, that you put a test question that confuses the issue of whether an index starts with zero or one, and you don't understand the ramifications of that and why that that's going to cause people to get pissed off, then you have no business writing an AP computer science test at all. Including, you know who, you know who agrees with that? The original author of the AP computer science test, who I actually had some emails back and forth with <laughs> back in 2014. So... He's like, oh man, it's so fucked up. I don't want anything to do with it anymore. Because <laughs> I, I was actually pursuing it for a skill stack. And no, no. This isn't good. I don't know what's up here, but it's not good. Error image pull. Oh, it's probably because I put last on it. It's an image pull error. This, this is, this, this is going to suck because there's going to be people that are not going to be able to get to. Thanks for the follows, everybody. Um, chosen by any of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, new Eovim is entirely written in Lua. Lua is a good language. I don't have anything wrong with Lua. It's just, you know, my tool for the job kind of thing. So this works. This code works. Now it's time to validate and stuff. Um, uh, what should we call it? Should we call it image address? Should we call it? Uh, NeoVim never ha doesn't have the right to call to call itself Vim in any way, but it does. So, yeah, it's not NeoVim. It's well, it's not, we're not going to get in that fight. You you can't rewrite an application in an entirely different language and call it a fork. That's not a fork. Yeah. Yeah, they do it all the time. Yeah, well, let's not go there because that gets people angry. Label. Um, I forgot to label my form values. Sue me. <laughs> I There's like a right way and a wrong way, and I don't remember. I used to teach this, and I have to look it up because I have to look because I can't remember everything. I'm not My brain's not that big. I don't have that much storage capacity. So there we go. Uh, for CSS, so this is how you do it. Label for CSS. All right. So, input type. Okay. So you have the label, and then you have the input type ID. My favorite language. Blah blah blah. I don't understand why they do that that way, but I'm gonna do it anyway. This is it. Oh, whatever. So for equals image. People are going to yell at me because I didn't put my quotes. You don't need them. Just fight me. They're not required by the spec. The spec does not require them. Container image. Uh, label. Label. Yep. Who? It's all going to get squished anyway. I just want to make sure I can maintain it. Yep. Remembering all the programming feature languages is impossible. I know. I, I constantly am reading like newbies on Twitter saying, I, is it okay for me to search for answers for things? I feel like I don't know stuff because I have to search for them. I'm like, 
Yeah, I know. That's why I use underscore and just regular characters that don't care. Yep. ID for attributes if you wrap input with label. Oh, you don't? That's new information to me. Um, so I will now do that. But the label... Wait, 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 wait. I did this wrong, right? I'm going to go see. I'm going to go see. So label for HTML. Label. Oh, and then that associates it with... ID HTML. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. How do you do for loops in X language? Um, I don't know. Name favorite language. I don't, I honestly don't understand. Well, you, you have to have an ID there. I don't know how you could not. You guys are saying things that confuse me. <laughs> because if you said input ID equals image, name equals image. Oh, maybe I don't need the name there is what you're saying. Well, no, I kind of do. Weird. Well, let's check. Container image. Uh, all right. Let me go look at my stuff. Container image. Um, how's it going, Boulevard? Boulevardstadt. 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 How's it going? Container image. Uh, we have a bunch that I typed in already. Um, I want to try a new one. Let's type in Jupiter. Jupiter slash. Is it Super Hub or Jupiter? I think it's Jupiter. First one is wrapping and label. Okay, you're helping me out here. Yeah. Text, text label or without wrapping the defined ID for attributes label. Text input ID equals whatever. Huh. I think people feel bad when they look stuff up because they don't consider whatever they're working on to be their own work. That's, I don't, I understand where that comes from, but that's totally wrong. Even Steve Jobs disagrees with that. He's like, I've been, his exact words, I've been shameless with stealing stuff. His exact words. You can look that up on YouTube. Uh, what is it? Good, good artists copy, great artists steal. That's what he says. He, he quote associates it with, with Plato or Aristotle, somebody. It's probably misattributed, but whatever. No, seriously. I mean, the whole idea of reading, we are a communal species. So it's, it's you're not plagiarizing if you're getting ideas off little things and then adapting it to what you're doing. Um, Yeah. So, so yeah. So we have, I mean, this is, this is fine. Um, I feel like we need to give them the option to pick their own container is images images. Uh, okay, so we could have specify the image itself. Um. I feel like we need to have some profiles in addition to that. We could have like a menu bar, a menu bar. We could we could put a menu bar on there and then if they picked one of the menu items it would fill in everything, you know what I mean? Yeah. We could probably actually put a little bit of JSON in here to do that. Yeah, that might be the way to go. I'm just I'm thinking about how to 
because it would be we would want to write like all of our different profiles right um yeah i mean it's this isn't too much too hard to do like steve jobs but i think he should have been more about foss yeah me too i'm i'm not a at all a steve jobs fan there's i mean just like anybody they're complicated right um so yeah you know i'm, I'm losing interest in this because it's fucking html <laughs> but it's required okay so we can we can type in our container image what's next um I mean, I wonder if I should, you know, try to try to format that better. What do you think? Let's 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 try to format this better. I'm gonna do aesthetics. How's it going, woman? Respecter nine thousand. What a name. Uh, container image. I think we need to put. I don't know. I I feel like we should probably put do some CSS here. Row. Um, uh, we should probably wrap the thing in a div. Let's just do some development here. Let's do that. So let's let's put this in a div. Oops, let's put this in a div here. And then then I'll transfer this over. And then we can give the div you know. Yep. Then what? Then we can give the div a name Okay, class equals text center. How about that? We'll do we'll do the bootstrap stuff, which I vaguely remember. Row text center makes me want to do. Uh, what's it called? There we go. So that was interesting. Container image column offset. Did I put both of the things in there? I oh, probably not. Oh, I, I put the div too early. Yep, you gotta go away. It is HTML. I need to edit all of this HTML. You can actually do that, but I don't remember how. You can actually like edit all the whole fucking thing as HTML. Let's do that. Let's do the form and then do edit as HTML. And we can break it out and all kinds of stuff. So let's do this. Let's do. And then I'll copy it over. Uh, so yeah, you go down here. There we go. Oh right, now it's like all tiny. That was weird. That was weird. Where'd it go? Server options. Where did my input go? Well, it probably reloaded without me wanting to reload it. I might just have to do this in my own form. Yep. So if we put... Oh, there is a container for the whole thing. Okay. Here we go. Multiform form data. Nope. Where is it? Okay, fine. Expect element. There we go. ID. And then this. Can't we put all those in a... I think, well... At one point, at one point in time, I thought you could do more advanced stuff. I thought you could put the label around the input, but I guess not. So put a div here. 
uh, was it class equals row text center div and div and then we'll put this one down here and click off how do you save it without clicking off of it I think that's it all right container image so it actually does let you do that um I wish I could make it expand for the whole thing but I don't know how to do that I am not that good. Column small offset to column small eight. Hmm. I don't know. Text center. Oh, that's for the server. Okay. All right. Text center. How about this? Let's change this to be. I fucking hate this little, these like tweaky thingies. I don't like doing this stuff takes so long column small offset wait 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 wait. what is this one that's the one we want yeah 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 we want we want this one whatever this one is yeah the feedback container this what is its class feedback container submit button Feedback widget hidden. No, that's not going to work. Okay. I was, I was hoping we could get the form control input class to input. Form control class to input. You think so? Um, form control class. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know bootstrap that well. You're saying to add it to this one? Yeah, let's try. Plus equals form control. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. Hell yeah. Um, I mean, because then they can just type into it, right? Um, uh, yeah. All right, let me get let me transfer that over before I forget. So let's do. Uh, I got the label. I could do class equals form control. Control. And yeah. I'm going to put that there. Just because. Uh, small, small changes. Small moves. Small move sparks. Small moves. Small move sparks. Small moves. That's a quote. For 20 points, what movie did I come from? One of the top five best movies of all time. Small move sparks. Small moves. Um. All right. Refresh. Oh, wow. Look how pretty that is. I am having a great day. Thank you very much. Hey, look at that. It lined up. Hey, it already looks prettier. It already looks so pretty. Um, I need to put some explanatory text up here, and I'm going to do that next. I'm going to put a little paragraph. Uh, I'm going to put something that says, please specify the container image. Uh, and then I want to give an example of them and then we're going to do some validation. Um, and I think we should probably stop there and then decide how, how we want them to provide CPU stuff. Well, I don't want to add CPU stuff until we know for a fact that we can set the CPU constraints and that's going to require some splunking into cube spawner, uh, which is going to, you know, take time. Um, so yeah. Uh, let me, let's, let's do the validation. So for the rest of today, I want to do image name validation and that's it. And I, um, I don't know. I, I wish we could take it as a helm parameter and pass, excuse me, pass it in. That would be really great because then we could have like a regular expression 
that they could pass to the Helm Config, but we don't have that right now. So, so I'm going to have to do it this way. Um, thank you for the, for the bootstrap tip there. That really helped. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and add some, some text in here just right now. It's super easy to do. It won't take very long. So I'm going to put a paragraph up here. This is why I didn't want to make it child zero because it would have failed, right? And we're going to put a paragraph and we're going to say, um, uh, any, we're going to say something like, you may specify any compatible Jupyter Hub server image uh, to be spawned. Um, uh, provided it is accessible from from the cluster I don't know uh, ho hosting 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 this uh, from I see So if it's not accessible, you know, you're fucked. <laughs> so, um, we could say something like, by default, uh, the uh, Jupiter, we should probably do code, Jupiter slash data science dash notebook will be used if uh, no container image is indicated. I mean, I'm writing HTML inside of Python, inside of YAML, inside of an <laughs> chart. I mean, it's probably going to look better, but this this is the kind of like, it's not bike shedding quite because I need it, right? But it feels like bike shedding. But I want I want it to look pretty, so you know, pe people like pretty. People, they do. People with money like pretty. They don't like terminal. They don't. There you go. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Whoopsie daisy. Um, I should probably put this as the as the name by default, and then I can get rid of all that. Yep, let's do that. You may uh, change uh, the specified image to any compatible Jupyter Observer image um, to be spawned, provided is accessible from this from this Kubernetes cluster. Um, uh, the image. The uh, the pod will run under your um, cluster name space. So so there you go. Hmm. <laughs> All right, so 
spin the container image form control and then, and then what we're going to do we need to do some validation i i'm going to do back end validation but i don't know how to send an error i wonder if i just return an error it's hard to know though so so what so we do oh we need to set the default value yep so i need to do image value value yep value equals um jupiter slash data science dash notebook now we're going to actually add code when i deploy this we're going to add code that forces it to have the name of our internal uh host and if it's not there, it'll fail. So that's gonna be gonna be a thing. So, but I have to get this one to work first. Uh, what did I just do? Oh, reapply this. Time for me to go run if I'm getting all tired. I get tired in the afternoon sometimes. My wife, my wife bought mineral water. They used to give this to you as medicine. Yep. I know. There you go. So, you may change the specified image to any compatible JupyterHub server image to be spawned, provided it is accessible. From this Kubernetes cluster, the pod will run under your cluster namespace. This is my container image, Jupyter Data Science Notebook. Start. Error image. That's cool. That's cool. I got an error and I don't know why. Are you saying it's because it's not there? Oh, it has to have latest at the end. Yep. It does. It has to have latest at the end. Did you see that? That's cool to know. All right. Let me add that. Sparkly or non-sparkly? How are you? I don't know. I like sparkles. Sparkles are fun. All right. Here we go. Come on, catch up. All right. Start my server. All right. This will fail. Watch. It's like, nope. That's not an image. I love that it gave us an error, though, before it didn't do that. This is good. This is this is good stuff. This is good stuff here. I didn't realize I was going to do that. I want to figure out what makes it do that because I want to be able to, to do that. It's because I didn't put anything in here. I, I or if it's because I put latest in there. I think it's because I put latest. Colon latest. Yep, that's what I think it is. Terminating, terminating, terminating. God, this is the hardest part of, of cloud native applications development. Is all the this like waiting i mean i got it down pretty fast but still still oh i'm starting my server lastest is it because i didn't type it in I wonder why. Maybe I got the name wrong. That's not 
right. What did I break? I broke something. What did I break? Okay, so form control. Class ID equals image value equals. Maybe I should put default value or something. No, this is fine. It should be fine. I don't know what's happening there. Where's the console? Jupyter data science latest. Yep. Start. How come that worked? I'm confused. I'm confused. That should not have worked. Unless it was caching it in the server or something. Start server. Form on change. Oh, because it's not populating the profile. Oh, you're brilliant. Absolutely. Absolutely. I completely concur with that. Yeah. Because it's not, it's the default value, but, but, but the submission doesn't do it because we don't change anything. Yeah. Uh, that is okay. That's brilliant. Thank you for that. So we're going to do that. And then we're just going to call form on change. Um, we don't use the event at all. So I mean, how do you do that? I mean, I could just do form on change and just call it directly. Right. Let's do that because I don't need to change. I don't know. I'm not passing anything to it. Yeah. I see exactly what, what's up. Yep. Good old web dev. You can't skirt it, man. You've got to know your web dev. This is why I added boost badges back for it. But, but it's going to be easier because I'm going to have like 140 badges by the time we're done. And they're going to all be about different things. And people won't have to learn all the badges. They can pick the ones they want kind of thing. That's the new boost approach, in case you're wondering. Uh, so, yeah. Reset, start my server. Let's see. If this worked, then we should have stuff in our output already. Yep. There it is. Yep, we did. So this should work. Yeah. All right. So that was it. That was that was a really good eye. Good eye on that, Khaled. Thank you for catching that. That that's totally what it was. It just it was our, our consolidation wasn't happening ahead of time, so excellent catch on that um so let's do that let's re restart this yeah all right so so let's do this stop my server if it's really stopped are you stopped yeah okay finally you're stopped all right so we are pretty golden um we are all set up to start passing more data. We've got a relatively explanatory, uh, you know, discussion of how this thing works. Um, and that's all. And we have an example that, that, that populates the spec, the, the field. This is everything that was initially requested, um, by the customer here. Um, we should probably add some form validation here but we don't have to i mean it'll it'll fail and it'll say that image is not there and it'll do it the hard way it'll say you know there's no image there in fact let me remind myself what it's actually going to do so if i do notebook and i leave a k off what's it going to do right uh start container block error image pull notebook back off pulling image so it's giving you all of the details if you're trying to do this and it'll recover uh, I've seen it recover before, um, you know, so you can see that you made a mistake. Um, you'll be redirected when it's here, back off pulling image. So what would the end user do? They would go back here, 
they'd say, okay, no, it didn't stop. It's like, stop my server. I don't want to do it. This is kind of the, 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 the zombie thing that happens, which is annoying. Because because if you indicate the image wrongly, uh, it does kind of hang you up. <laughs> it's like, because you can't see your status on your image either. Right? So this is this is going to be something we're going to have to talk people through and it's annoying. So they're going to want to do K. They probably don't know Kubernetes. So K get pa I mean, a lot of these users are not going to do it. Get pause dash and Jovian. And there I've got an image, right? An error pull image. It, it can't get, and it's going to be stuck there forever. It's like, <laughs> yeah, your server sorry. It, it, it eventually will fail out right but it takes so long to do that um so yeah oh boy give me a second here um so i don't know what to say to that yeah we're just stuck here until that thing gets unfixed this is the way that system has been written. I have no input into that. And yeah. I'm trying to find. Nope. Okay. So they probably don't know how to clean that up. And I actually talked to somebody who was it? Uh, I think it was Black Mouse who said they set up a, they set up an extra service to kill off frozen servers like this, so that they they could actually click a thing if you didn't want to make it wait around while it was trying to get your name wrong, you know, and so because you know otherwise you're screwed, you you they won't know to like kill it on their own, so K delete delete pod pods uh jupiter joven oops k k delete not delete uh oh no it is a delete but i understand that you can actually leave it now what do you mean oh wait Where's my delete, delete, delete. Okay, delete pod trooper joven. So that's your main server. And you can have the other extra servers if you want, but uh yep. no found. All right. So so we should be able to go back here and click on stop. But the first thing we're going to need to do is like be really sure of the image name. I wish we could do a call to see if the image is available, if it even exists. If to do that, I would have to figure I could probably get the Python API to use a, a, a request against Portis or Harbor and to see if the image exists. And if the image doesn't exist, say, I'm sorry, that image doesn't exist. I bet you there's a way we could do that in real time. Yeah. I need to think, consider that. So that, that might be a way to go. That would, that would be cool to do that. Um, so start my server. Yeah, you may change the specified image to any compatible Jupyter to be uh, provided it is accessible from this Kubernetes cluster. The pod will run under your cluster namespace. Your server pod, I should say that. Yeah. Or under your cluster namespace. 
uh, people might not know what that means, but those those who do, those who are providing their own images, you know. So we should say, I should probably say, if you get the name wrong, and what should we say? If you get the name wrong, it's up to you to fix it and clean it up. Hmm. I have a feeling I know what I want to look at tomorrow. Um, yeah. Uh, exit with error code one and no reason as to why. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering how I could validate the name. How much time we got? Seven, 15 minutes. Um, your server pod will run under your cluster namespace uh, where it can be accessed and managed from cube CTL as well. So that's important to know. How's it going here, Ram? So, uh, specifying a non existent image will hang. Uh, on image pull and require uh, cleanup. Uh, when in doubt, use the default. How about that? Was it error image pull? I mean, I, this is a kind of a caveat for now. I'll, I'll change it later and make it cleaner. I just, I don't want people to, to get totally. Yeah. Well, they didn't tell me that, right? I'm I'm going to commit this and this is going to be the the main thing for this week. And then I'm going to do the research on uh two things. And I'm going to put this in my log. I got to not forget this. I'm going to write this in my log. So I need to do the research uh, research uh API call to Portis and or Harbor to test existence of image. So as a kind of a sanity check, that there is broke. <laughs> um, and we need to, uh, we need to research the, um, research cube spawner values for CPU, RAM, GPU uh, constraints. So that's that's the remaining work. I'm kind of wrapping up here because I'm going to go do my run here and then come back tonight with some other stuff. But I want to wrap up my workday, uh, this part of my workday anyway, um, with that. So I'm going to refresh this. I mean, that's quite a paragraph there, but I... But I, I feel like that's pretty and it's good enough. Uh, you may change the specified image to any compatible Jupyter Hub server image provided is accessible from this Kubernetes cluster. Your server pod will run under your cluster namespace where it can be accessed and managed from kubectl as well. Oh, I need to put code around that. Um, 
by me, me playing Witcher 3? <laughs> no, I mean run. Like, I'm going to go run right now. Yeah, Witcher 3 doesn't come till 9, if at all. I played guitar last night. <laughs> Specifying a non-existent image will hang the server pod and require cleanup. When in doubt, use the default. I really want this here because uh, non-existent or incompatible, right? Okay, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that. In. Did I spell that right? Uh, all right. I know I'm resetting just to get my typos to be gone. I play guitar sort of. <laughs> Actually, I just played a little bit last night and my fingers are killing me. I have no, no, uh, no calluses to be, to be had. And I really need them. I've got to play a little bit every day to get them back. It's just really kind of shameful. I don't have any calluses anymore. There was a time I would have been really ashamed. <laughs> Guitarist Seppuku, you lost your calluses. <laughs> yeah, it's like, they don't lie. Your calluses don't lie. <laughs> You're not a guitarist. <laughs> When's the last time you touched your guitar? That's what they say. So, uh, specifying a non existent or incompatible image will hang the server pod and, and require cleanup. When in doubt, use the default. So, it doesn't say we have to do the cleanup, but they have to do the cleanup, right? So, we click on start, and here it comes create a container notebook. Boom. And now they have a persistent notebook with the file, and it's got their pretty terminal, and they can run it. I feel like this is a success. This is this is a win. So, you know, there's there's going to be management stuff for sure. Um, oh yeah, it saves everything on exit because it, it's persistent. Yep, yep. You can actually add a brand new server with a different type. Yeah, watch. I'll show you. So you can actually uh, once it's finished stopping launch server. Yes. So we're gonna launch. Let's launch the base, the base, uh, the base one, which has nothing in it. I should probably, I should try SciPy. I should try SciPy. I haven't tried that one before. So yeah, it'll, it'll keep the same persistent file system, home directory and everything. And it'll just run a different image. See how it says it's pulling the image. Dude, my computer is fan. It just came on. It's 254. It has the there it goes. Wait, what? I don't remember that. Why did why didn't that update before? That's kind of cool. Uh, was it because I didn't click on the event log? Oh my god. Oh my god. My dark mode made it so I couldn't see it. Yeah, this is cool. This is really cool. Yeah, pulling image sci-fi pie book. It has to pull it off the internet and then it has to put it in my mini cube. So my computer is like not happy right now. Uh, Senpai notebook latest. Well, looks like I don't have it. Air image pull. All right. First things first. Um, backing off pulling the image yep I can't do it failed to pull image RPC unknown description equals failed to register layer error processing tar file pycache no space left on device that does not sound good How do I not have space left on my device? Yep, 
That is insane. Storage. Disk, the MVK, 19 gigabytes. I've already filled up 19 gigabytes. I wonder, hmm. Huh. Because it has to store all those images inside of the. I see what's up. Yeah. Warning, failed to pull image. Under description layer failed to register layer error processing tar file. Site package assumption C Python no space left on device. That's because I'm using a virtual machine. This is interesting. So I don't know what doesn't have the space. I'm trying to it's gotta be my Docker. I probably have a ton of images on there. Here, let me let me try something. All right. Actually, oh boy. Look at all those layers and images that I have. This is what's up. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason. Docker images. Oh my God. Core DNS, etcd, pause, those have to be there. But it should have all the other ones. Yeah. PySpark, AllSpark, TensorFlow. These are three gigabytes each, and we're like 20 gigabytes on the system. Wait. What is it? Um, is it mount? Docker system prune. Oh, I know. I need I definitely need one. Hi, Max. Um I need to see how what my stats are. I got two CPUs on here. No swap. You can't have swap. 47 gigs of... Yeah. Um, this just gives me free memory. What? It's Redline? No, it's not Redline. It's just, it's just like busy. It's really busy. Yeah. That, that image puller is kind of looping right now. That's kind of a problem. Yep. Task and then one running, ten sleeping, stop. One day. Huh. This doesn't make any sense to me right here, though. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, how could it be doing that? Um, we need to look at disk utilization. Du dash h. No, we need df actually. We've got so. Are these all mounted points? I think they are. All those overlays are all mounts. Shit. Yep. Percent used. 18%. It says I only used 18% on slash. Oh, that's tempfs. Never mind. Kill the virtual environment. No, I have to restart it. I'm fine. It, it, the overlays are what's causing the problem. The Docker overlays. Yep. Yep. There's multiple overlays. Um, I mean, I wish I could tell how much space is used. I mean, what's a, a fresh... I mean, I always use DU, but overlays are getting like, are killing me. Uh, mount. I use free all the time. That's for memory. Does, is there a free for disk? Because I, I don't remember if there is. Maybe. You discs? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't used that before. I'm trying to update my 
my system administration things. I, I'm used I'm used to using F, uh, FU and F and, F and DF. Those are the things I, I grew up on. So, so this just tells you memory. Praise just memory. And maybe I was thinking maybe it had it had something that was not right. So yeah, so we have we have tons of memory left over. God, it is it out. Minikube allocated four gig of memory. Shit. Well, no wonder I can't run two of those at one time. So it says that's two gig available. Okay. So I need disk utilization, which, but I need it in a percentage of total disk. But to me, it doesn't seem like that's the problem. I think the problem is because it's trying to pull down the image in another container that has a more minimal maximum size. Because, because I can't, well, Docker images. So we have all these images that have to be here. Base notebook, PySpark, AllSpark, TensorFlow, DataSci. We don't have the SciPy. I wonder if I try to pull it from here. Let's try. Docker pull Jupyter slash SciPy dash notebook. This will give us the error right here, right? No, see, it's fine. Oh, you know what this means? Do you have to shade? Yeah, that's what I did. Yep. Um. No, I realize what I did. Minikube, Minikube is trying to go out to the public and get it. But I think that my Kubernetes deployment is looking for the private registry. And so it's it's trying to resolve it first at the private one. And the private registry for Minikube, as I understand it, is just whatever's in the local Docker. It doesn't look like I actually pulled down the SciPy notebook, which is why it's not available. I'm having a feeling that's what's up. Oh boy, look at that. I don't understand. Why does it say no space left on device? Left on what device? Host home? 180 gig. This doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, so it says there's only 1.8 gig on SDA. Hmm. That might be it right there. It says there's only 2.8 gig available on the entire slash drive. Uh, it has something to do with the overlays. Yeah, I think we need to do a Docker image prune. Is it, is it, it's, uh, images prune? 250 gig? I didn't see it was 250 gig. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Docker prune images. I don't remember the Docker commands at all anymore. I don't. Is it system prune images? Uh, what is it? It's Docker. I know it's prune, but I don't remember. Docker prune dash H. Um, rename, restart, pull, push, pause, inspect, list images. Uh, commands. Prune fit to fifty. It's 305, I need to go run. All right, so we'll log up, pull, push, rename, restart. Okay, we'll enable the price store. Oh, right. Um, 
I'm just curious if I kill these. You know what? Let's 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 get to where we need to be. Spawn failed out. Time failed out. Thanks God. That's what I want. So, let's actually start one that we know is there. So like TensorFlow. That's already loaded. So this should just be able to pull it straight up. Doesn't have to download it. Yep. So the TensorFlow one loaded, no problem. Docker RMI, remove images, Docker images, awk. I don't want to remove them, though. There's another way to do that. You can prune all that. I, it's not that. <laughs> but that's a good way, too, yeah. So, um, all right. So I've, I've confirmed everything for this session. I'm going to go ahead and close the session down, um, this, this learning session, and I'll save the video off for tomorrow. Uh, uh, I was just trying to get some extra space back in my mini cube. Docker image prune, dash A. Yep, that's the one I was looking for. Thank you. Um, but I don't really need it because the ultimately what I was testing was can I indicate a different image, which I absolutely can. I've just done it two or three times now. So this is working. This is this was the main deliverable for this week. So everything else is is you know bonus. So we're gonna be looking at that stuff. So let me write that in the log. So we added the JS function to combine all the form data and profile. We added the Python function to unpack the profile string on the back end. Uh, we have not yet added image name validation from JavaScript and KubeSpawner. Uh, we may or may not do that. That's still a decision to be made about how much validation we want to do on that. Uh, and that includes possibly, as I said here, uh, research an API called the Portis or Harbor to test for the existence of an image, which would be really nice if we could dynamically do that. Not too big a hit on the network to do that uh, during the form validation. Um, and then we could add cores, RAM, GPU, the resource parameters, and we're going to try to figure out what that's going to look like interactively as a user thing. Because so, do we want to allow people to click on buttons and say, "I want a standard image for this," in addition to what they're already providing in their profile? Uh, in which case, we just you know pre-populating the image for them. Um, so we probably are going to want to have that, but I don't want to do any of this until I know what the cube spawner values are for CPU, RAM, and GPU constraints, because we have to be able to map the input form data into the cube spawner values for that, and I don't know what those are. So that'll be stuff that I do tomorrow. Uh, assuming I get time to do some work on this, I will probably uh, in the morning before before I do the afternoon of um, just generic Kubernetes learning, um, and that's every Friday afternoon. I just allocate that to go look on that stuff. And by the way, that tomorrow, Friday, I'm going to be starting to set up, starting to build my own Kubernetes nodes from scratch using virtual machines, as many virtual machine instances as I can put on this eight core machine over here, which is probably not many. Um, and, and, and we'll see how that goes. I, I want to avoid using the cloud for that because I just, I want to, I want to see what it looks like using, you know, all of the tools necessary to build a localized image, uh, including, uh, you know, Vert Manager or whatever, and, and all those other command line tools. So that's it for today. Um, it's pretty fun. We got, I mean, this is huge progress for me because, I mean, we didn't have any of this before. So, and we're taking advantage of the hack. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the Minikube and, and, and take off, but... Uh, to those on YouTube, you know, see you soon. Um, I honestly don't know when and I will be back and what I will be doing. I can say that at 9 o'clock I'll, I'll probably be playing a little bit of Witcher. Um, but I don't know. I'm going to go for a run and think about it and we'll come back. And But if you have questions, you always come on in. Let me know. Bye. Uh, the, end the YouTube stream.